So what is your take on QBD and how the industry overall is, is reacting to it? And then um, what do you see happening in biotech specifically? Well, Agnes, I think QBD represents a real opportunity for companies to drive uh, their process development efforts in a way that not only can meet regulatory expectations and lower risk for their programs, but uh, if they approach it using uh, techniques that have been proven uh, in similar quality systems such as quality function deployment, it can actually help companies uh, speed time to market, improve quality, and do so at, at reduced costs. So it's very important that companies understand what's been uh, used in terms of these methods in other industries and look for examples and methods that have been proven successful in those other industries so that they can uh, drive value within their companies and at the same time meet regulatory uh, expectations. Uh, have you been following the pilot study that you know FDA is working on with uh, with pharma now and you know how do you feel that is shaping up? Yes well it, it, it must be going very well because uh, the FDA is extending that and encouraging more applications uh, uh, so obviously they have some more work to do, but I think they, they're seeing real value in that process or else they wouldn't uh, continue it. Uh, I, I think one of the dangers is that uh, companies may be waiting until uh, that is completed before they do anything in this regard. And I think that's a danger because uh, even if a company isn't going to develop a design space or, or, or want to do that, it's very important they start bringing in some of the methodologies of QPD uh, especially with respect to risk management because um, that's probably going to be expected uh, for any application and being able to justify your rationale for your decisions, especially your critical uh, uh, process uh, uh, parameters and critical quality attributes. Uh, even if you're not using QBD per se, uh, companies should have a risk management program be bringing that, that inward. So I think companies today need to be taking the steps and and not waiting till all the answers and in, in industry consensus would be a mistake for companies. And um, we have seen that uh, sometimes uh, companies, uh, leaders, you know, who are trying to drive these projects are, uh, well, there is an investment, you know, required and, and senior management doesn't always seem to, uh, to recognize the benefit. Um, you know, can you quantify, you know, the potential um, you know, savings in, in the cost of, of traditional quality by analytics uh, yeah. to a, a corporate manager, what would you suggest right. that Yeah, it's an important question. Do? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of case studies or analysis now within our industry that can really speak to uh, what's the cost benefit based on the investment that I make. I'm sure somebody's thinking about that and doing that type of study. I, I think this is again where it's important to look at the comparators in other industry that have used similar techniques where there's more of a case study and probably more uh, data around what the quantifiable benefits might be in terms of benchmarking that. So that's again another reason why I think it's important to look at what's been done in terms of an overall quality system that has a customer focus, which is in essence is what uh, QBD is. And so quality function deployment which really was the basis for QBD, uh, is an area where I recommend uh, people look to get those types of answers. But I think part of it is making the first baby steps, uh, as I mentioned recently, bringing in a risk management program. That's not a huge investment to move in that direction. It's uh, updating your quality systems and bringing the tools in and having people start to use those. That doesn't represent a huge uh, investment, but nonetheless, I think it add a lot of value. Uh, Today, you spoke about uh, the challenges facing uh, smaller uh, bio companies. How can they, uh, you know, start addressing this? Uh, what, you know, what um, should they just start with the risk management piece? Then, or, uh -huh. I think that's a first step, mm -hmm. and uh, people have heard a lot about knowledge management. I think that's the other key enabler that uh, people hear about in terms of. Uh, you know, implementing programs like that. I think in terms of uh, knowledge management, um, the, the key aspect there for a company is to uh, make sure that they're documenting uh, their experiments and technical reports uh, in, in a way that's discoverable later. 
and it has appropriate review, especially those that involve uh, the critical uh, process parameters and quality attributes and other aspects of uh, QBD, uh, that those be brought into a quality system and, uh, and have some control over those, especially since uh, process uh, validation is moving towards a life cycle approach. So uh, providing that documented evidence will be pulled further uh, forward into the development program. So uh, I think it, the, the focusing on those two key enablers is, is where the, uh, the effort uh, should start initially, uh, even for small companies. Again, keeping it simple and keeping it... What are the key tools, then? Would FMEA be, be one of them, or, you know, what do you see as the key? Yeah, th there's a number of uh, tools and methodologies that can be used, and it's important for a company to bring in the appropriate tools that are appropriate for their stage of development and for the program needs that, that, that they may have. So certainly uh, risk analysis tools such as FAMIA are there, but FAMIA isn't uh, the appropriate tool to use in all circumstances, uh, especially perhaps earlier in the development program. Uh, fault tree analysis is another technique. So again, it, it's uh, looking at what's going on and bringing in the appropriate tools. But other than that, there uh, are various uh, risk uh, uh, analysis matrices and um, you know other tools that are used to map um, customer needs, uh, patient needs, and other regulatory customers and your manufacturing internal customers. Uh, there are tools that can help organizations uh, look at those needs. And then that, there are other tools that map that into you know, specific actions and responsibilities within the organization. This helps ensure that everyone's pulling on the same oars at the same time, moving in the same direction. So there are a number of tools that that are out there that companies uh, can use.